Dr. Jeff DIY here. My 2007 Prius had another red triangle of death. Oh man, let's see what it is this time. My code reader gave me this code, POA93, and it said that people replaced the engine water pump. That didn't seem right because my engine was not overheating. I didn't have anything that dramatic or catastrophic. I just had a dash light, but the car was driving the same. So I did some research and found there was actually a factory service bulletin on the inverter coolant pump, not the engine coolant pump. And after I turned the car on and off a few times, you'll see the PSC and brake symbols went away, but I still had the red triangle. So I looked at the inverter coolant pump reservoir and the fluid was still indicating that the pump was not working. Yeah. When it is working, you'll see turbulence like this. This is how it's gonna be at the end. So to get access to that pump, First, you want to take off the bumper. It sounds kind of hard, but it's not really. There's a screw where I was just pointing. Then there's some push pins there, retainer clips. And oh man, those were supposed to be easy, but they weren't. Check out my video with the link. Once you get those off though, you pull off the top of the bumper there. And then here's the other 10 millimeter screw on the side. And I'm going to show you how to get to those 10 millimeter screws. You just peel back the plastic fender panel. And there it is, just any old 10 millimeter screw that you take off and then you pull the bumper out like that. You don't have to pull that hard. On the driver's side, I actually still had one of these push clip retaining pins. I was surprised it still made it. Made it a little harder actually to get it off, but not too bad. You just peel back the plastic there. And then there's the 10 millimeter screw, which you take off just like I'm doing. Get that out of the way. And then you pull it back a little on the bumper there. Now you want to take off this plastic cover. This gives you access to the bolt that is one of the three bolts holding in the headlamp assembly. Take that off there. And then you kind of pull it forward and then you can get the bumper out of the way, just there like I'm go. doing there. Okay, the done. whole key is just to get access to that bolt there and then another one on the side. 10 millimeter bolt, take it off there. Then the one at the top is easy. You just lift the hood for that. And then there's the one on the side. There's the three bolts. And with that, you can take off the headlamp assembly. And after that, the job is pretty straightforward because you have great access right to the pump. You don't have to do any digging around. Here you can see the pump itself. There's two hoses, three 10 millimeter bolts, and an electrical connection. So this was very hard to get off. I tried to pinch it and pull. I tried to push in the tab and use pliers and yank it up and I couldn't. Then I realized the tab actually needs to be pulled outward and then lift up and that was pretty simple. So here you just get some hose clamps and pinch them out of the way and then use a radiator clamp. Those are really handy. I got those at Harbor Freight. They just basically pinch the radiator hose so it doesn't leak out while you're doing the whole procedure. Here I'm doing it on the top hose, which I put a piece of blue tape around so I wouldn't mix up the two. There we go. It's much better to do this while the pump is still screwed into the car, so that way you're not dealing with it flopping around, because you got to pull a little to get those there hoses off. Now the part's free. And these are attached by three 10 millimeter bolts, which you just take off, and then boom, the pump is off. Okay, then it just pops out. Here's the part with the part number, Dorman 601015. And I took it out and there's a little tag talking about how it's the improved design. Remember I said that the earlier ones had a factory service bulletin because they were faulty. And I'm just comparing them to see if they look like they match up. And then I noticed that the new one looks taller, looks a little sturdier, but otherwise everything lines up in order. And they said it was redesigned to work better. So I thought that was okay. Here I just put a little anti-seize on the bolts after I dealt with that bolt extraction earlier, which I linked in the other video. Then you just hand start them and then snug them down with a 10 millimeter socket. Put the hose back in place here. Once you get it lined up and shove it on there, then you can undo the hose clamp. Like I said, it's a lot easier to do this when the part is screwed into the car so it's not flopping around. Then I put the lower one on, same procedure here. Get that hose clamp in order. And then after that, you can take off the radiator clamps and they just slide off like that. 
And then I'm going to do the other one. Now everything's totally reattached. Now see how it does wiggle? I was disturbed by that and I was trying to put washers and stuff. And then I looked at the old part and it has play too. And it has to do with the way the plastic interfaces with the rubber washer here. And it's just designed like that. I think maybe it's meant to do that to absorb some So don't shock. be alarmed if it has a little play. Put a little dielectrical grease around the electrical connector and pop it on. And then check the headlamp before you reinstall everything to make sure it's still working. To check your work, start up the car and make sure it's got that turbulence. Looks like we did a good job. Now it's just a matter of putting everything back together. So you screw the bolts back in for the headlamp assembly there. And then try to line up the bumper with those tabs. That's what I was trying to point out there. And it'll kind of get seated there. Then you just push it back in place like I'm doing there. Put that 10 millimeter screw back in. Push the paneling back in there. You do the same on the other side. This is one of those jobs that sounds kind of scary where you hear, oh, I got to take off the bumper and take off the headlamp assembly. But it's really not that complicated as I showed you. And, uh, once I got it done, I was really glad because I was able to go on a road trip and use the AC and drive for hours and it didn't overheat or give me any error signals or diagnostic service code. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button so it's easier to find by others. Consider subscribing. This is Dr. Jeff DIY. I'll see you the next time something breaks.